in this video i'll be talking about division algorithm so let us see the statement of the theorem this says given two integers a and b b strictly greater than zero then there exist unique integers q and r and we call this q and r as the quotient and remainder satisfying a is equal to q times b plus r and the remainder satisfy this inequality remainder is always greater than or equal to zero and strictly less than b and we have considered b to be strictly positive and if b is not positive then we will see what is the condition on r as a corollary to this theorem so for this moment we'll assume that b is a positive integer and now let us see the proof of this theorem so for the proof we start beginning by considering a set we start by proving a set which is written it by s equal to a minus xb such that x belongs to integer and a minus xb is non-negative so we want to prove that this set is non-empty and if we prove that this set is non-empty we can apply the well-ordering principle but now let us see what is this set this is a minus xb so here that means it is something related to the remainder so if you focus that this is the statement which is given here this is a equal to q times b plus r so this value is a minus qb equal to r so basically we are uh, working on the remainder and if we can show that the left hand side is greater than or equal to zero so obviously we'll say that right hand side r is greater than or equal to zero so that will prove our this condition so we have constructed a set s which is a minus x b and x belong to integer just like here q is a quotient which belong to integer there exist integers q and r so this is our same condition that is why we have started considering this set S. And I first want to show that this is non-empty. So to do this, select X is equal to minus of absolute value of A. So we note that A minus absolute value of this multiplied by B. So this is the value I have substituted in this expression. This is A minus this value I have considered it as X multiplied by b so this value is same as a plus absolute value into b and this is always greater than or equal to a plus absolute value of a because we know that b is always greater than or equal to 1 as we have considered that b is strictly positive quantity so the least value b can take is equal to 1 or it is greater than 1 so this is same as a plus absolute value of a and this is a non-negative quantity so that shows that if we select s equal to this value which is minus of absolute value of a in that case the set s is non-empty so this implies s is non-empty so if the s is non-empty so that proves our condition so as s is non-empty so then by well ordering principle we can say that it consists of a smallest element so let us call the smallest element as r so s contains a smallest and i'm calling smallest integer as r so obviously now r is a element which belongs to s and r is the smallest element so there exists an integer q belonging to integer such that i can write r is equal to a minus q b and we have already proved that r is greater than or equal to zero and r belongs to s so this is smallest so that proves our first inequality condition that the remainder is greater than or equal to zero as r is greater than or equal to zero so now we argue that r is also less than b so once we prove that r is less than b and r is greater than or equal to zero so this will prove our inequality that r lies between zero and b and equality is included here with the left hand side inequality so if not if this condition is not satisfied so then we will say that r is greater than or equal to b and if this case hold let us see what is the set we have considered in the starting we have considered a set a minus x into b where x belongs to integer and a minus xb is a non-negative element and we have also shown that s is a non-empty set so now let us consider a similar element a minus q plus 1 into b so here i have selected the value for x as q plus 1 so this means this whole element a minus q plus 1 b this belongs to s and now let us just open this this is a minus q into b minus b now a minus q b is same as the selection of r we have already said that s contains the smallest integer call it as r and for that we have considered that there exists a q belonging to such that so r is having this expression so this value is simply r minus b and this is non-negative but this contradicts our given choices as this value r minus b is also smaller than r but we have said that r is the smallest so this contradicts our 
given condition so this is not going to hold so this implies r is less than b so this satisfy our this expression that a can be written as q times b plus r and 0 less than or equal to r strictly less than b so we have proved the existence part and let us show that these integers are unique also so for the uniqueness let me to assume that a has two representations so a let's consider that a has two representations and in the first representation i will consider a as q times b plus r and in the next representation let me to consider q dash b plus r dash and corresponding to the first expression i have this inequality corresponding to the second expression the inequalities are this and this implies simply take r dash minus r on one side equal to b times q minus q dash and noticing that from the first inequality if I simply take the negative of this, I will get minus of r less than or equal to 0. This changes the inequality sign and let's keep the second inequality as it is. So 0 strictly less than or equal to r dash strictly less than b. Now simply add the, these two inequality. I get minus b strictly less than r dash minus r less than b or it is equivalent to writing r dash minus r absolute value less than b. So now from this expression and from the given expression, let us call this as double star. What we can get is we can get b times absolute value of q minus q dash equal to absolute value of r dash minus r. So this is same as b times q minus q dash is strictly less than b using the star equation. Now as b is strictly positive, I can divide and this is absolute value. So this is non-negative less than 1. Now as q and q dash both belong to integer and holding this inequality because they are integer and they lie between 0 and 1 and 1 is strictly less than. So the only possibility is the q minus q dash absolute value should be equal to 0. So this implies q must be equal to q dash. And if q is equal to q dash then from the previous expression which is double star we can see that this also implies that r must be equal to r dash and hence the uniqueness hold. So we say that there exist integers q and r with the unique values. As a consequence of the above theorem, I can have this corollary. If a and b are integers with b not equal to 0, so b can be either greater than 0 or less than 0, then there exist unique integers q and r such that this expression hold and r lies between 0 less than or equal to r less than absolute value of b. And this symbol I have used it for there exist. So you can see that if b is in this expression, if b is strictly positive, then there is nothing to prove. The previous theorem work. What happens if b is strictly less than 0? So now for the negative case, let us prove now this corollary. So in the proof, we can see that if b is strictly positive, then the, by the previous theorem result holds nothing to prove. And consider the case when b is negative. So when b is negative, we know that absolute value of b is always positive. So apply division algorithm that we have just done on the integers a and absolute value of b. So we say there exist integer q dash and r such that a is equal to q times absolute value of b plus r. And here now the remainder lies between this expression. So r lies between absolute value of b and it is greater than or equal to 0. So this value is q dash. We have considered this as for some integer q dash both belonging to integer. And also note that absolute value of b is same as minus of b because we have considered b to be negative. So for example, let us consider b as minus 5. So when I consider minus b, this is same as minus of minus 5. So that is always a positive number. So that is why now consider absolute value of b is equal to minus b. And let us consider q is equal to minus of q dash. So now from this expression simply replace absolute value of mod b by this b and take this negative sign in this symbol. So we can write down a is equal to q times b plus r and r lies between 0 and less than or equal to absolute value of b. So there is an upper bound on r is absolute value of b and this is what is the division algorithm. So this is irrespective of the integers whether a and b are positive or negative. So here we are dividing a by b. So b should be not equal to 0. So that, that is the only requirement in the division algorithm. And we have the few remarks now corresponding to the division algorithm. So the first remark is square of an integer leaves remainder 0, 1 upon division by 4. So we know that consider an integer n that can be either even or odd integer. So consider the two cases n is equal to 2k or 2k plus 1. Now I want to consider the square of the integer. So consider n square. 
so that means i can consider 2 square if you consider simple 2 square this is 4 times q square and this is same as 4 times k so this means here the remainder is 0 and now consider the odd square so that is 2 q plus 1 whole square so this is same as 4 times q square plus q plus 1 so this is same as 4 times k plus 1 and i've considered k as q square plus q so you can see that whenever we have the square of an integer and we are dividing it by 4 so it leaves the remainder always 0 or 1 and similarly we can verify the another remark as square of any odd integer is of the form 8k plus 1 so i want to consider only odd integers so let us now consider it on the form 4k plus 1 and 4k plus 3 now the choice in which classes we are considering depending upon the result that we want to prove because we want to consider the square and we want in the 8k plus 1 classes so if i only consider consider 2q plus 1 so this makes me only to reach to the 4k class it doesn't make me to reach to 8k class so i should consider the appropriate integer so n should be considered with the division of 4 so that means n has 4k 4k plus 1 4k plus 2 and 4k plus 3 so these are the classes uh, when any integer is divided by 4 and among these these two are the odd classes so we have first considered the odd integer now consider the square of these odd integer so if i consider 4k plus 1 and 4k plus 3 whole square this will be giving me 8 times 2k square plus k plus 1 and i can write this at 8k dash plus 1 so this is of the same class and similarly i have this expression 2q square plus 3k plus 1 plus 1 this is the same as 8k dash plus 1 so the both belong to the 8k plus 1 classes